Okay, so here we go. So this workshop is on Calendly. And um, basically, let me show you what Calendly is all about. Uh, so let me show you one of my courses in which I'm using Calendly. And um, here you can see I have a link that um, goes to virtual office hours. So when my students uh, want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one session uh, with the professor, they can go into Blackboard, click on virtual office hours. When they click on that, on that button, it, uh, it Calendly will open in a new window. And so this is the, this is how the calendar looks. I'm already booked for February, so it says view next month. And so this is how students will see your slots, your available slots. So for example, if I want to meet with the professor, let's say Monday, March 7, the, the, the student will click here, and then all your available slots will be listed right here. And, and this really saves you a lot of time because Calendly is linked to your Google Calendar. So if you have um, any events already scheduled, let's say if I had a, a scheduled event Monday, March 7, if I had something scheduled at 11 a.m., this slot would not show to the students. And so therefore, you, you um, prohibit any conflicts from happening. And so this is why uh, Calendly works really great with, um, Mary, you have a question? You, you weren't sharing your screen. Oh. Start Thank again. You. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. put it in the chat. <laughs> and I, was like, I, got too, I got too excited. Uh, let me go back. You see, I got too excited. You got you pumped me up, and I got all pumped, and then I was like, "Let's go at you know, let's go." Hercules, Hercules, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Thank you for that. That's what would have been a disaster if I just would have. All right, so I'll start from the top. Here we go. So let me go. So let's let me show you what Calendly is all about. I'm gonna open up my Blackboard course, and if I go if I go to my sandbox here i can show you where i have can i have virtual office hours on the left hand side of my navigation menu here and so when the student clicks on virtual office hours they can click on this button here and then my calendly will open up and they can then choose uh, to see what dates are available. See, for my February is already full, so they have to click View Next Month. And so, for example, if we go to March 7, if I if I click on March 7, you can see that I have an 11 a.m. slot open, 2 p.m., 2:30, and 3 3 o'clock. I'm running my office hours for an hour, but you can set you can set up your office hours to be anytime, 10 minutes, 15. 30 minutes to an hour or more. So you control uh, how long these hours are, the slots are. And I'll show you that in a moment how to do that. So when the student selects a date, for example, let's say I want to do this Monday, March 7 at 11 a.m. and I click on it and they click confirm. Then the student types in their name, email address, and a little bit about why they want to meet. Like, let's say they want to go over chapter one with me, or they're having trouble at home, or there's a medical condition. They can type a little bit, uh, a little blurb here, just to give me a heads up on why we're meeting. And then the student then clicks schedule event. And this will automatically link to your Google Calendar, and it will create the appointment and what I love about this is that you don't have to communicate with students through email. Everything gets done automatically through Calendly. And it saves you a lot of back and forth, emails back and forth. Oh, I can't make it Monday. Can you make it Tuesday? No, I can't make it Tuesday. Can you make it Thursday? And that can eat up a lot of your time. And so doing it this way, the students already know what slots are available. 
the ball is on their court. They can't say that, oh, professor, I tried to book with you and I couldn't. You have all these slots already available for them. If the ball is on their court now and if they really want the help, they have to go into your Calendly and choose the slot that's available. First come, first serve. And you can always, they can always email you in case all the slots are, are booked. They can always email you and ask, you know, hey, professor, I see that all your slots are taken. Can, you know, can you accommodate me for a different time slot? So that's really what Calendly is all about. It's all about saving you time, automating the whole process, eliminating email communication, and just scheduling an event with no hassle. So if that's what you're looking for, then let me show you how you can set up your Calendly account. So the first thing you have to do is you gotta go to calendly.com. So that's C A L E N D L Y dot com. And then you're gonna create an account. You can click sign up. And you know, you want you can use your FIT email address or your personal email address. And then you can link it to your FIT email address that way so that it's connected to your your FIT Google Calendar. I already have an account, so let me show you how uh, you can set up your Calendly. So once you've done the whole registration process, you enter your FIT email address and you've done all of that, and then you then you can log in to Calendly. Okay, and so Calendly is there's a free version, and the free version is good enough for what I, for our purposes today in creating um, office hours. Um, we at FIT have not purchased it. Um, and I don't know if that might happen in the near future, but for right now, the free version is, is enough for what we need to do. And so they allow you to create one event. So right now I just have this one little box here and I titled it one-on-one -on -one session. It's a one hour booking. And this is how I, uh, this is the link to my Calendly right here at the top, which is calendly.com forward slash Jose underscore Diaz one. So once you're, once you get to this point, you go to the, um, to the box. In this case, this, this is the box. This is the only one I'm going to be using for my, for my one-on-one -on -one sessions. You click on the little gear icon here at the top right corner of the box. And you click on it, and it takes you then to uh, a little drop down menu. And then you want to select edit. All right, so go ahead and click edit. And so everything is lined up vertically in, in the order that you need to complete. So the first thing that we need to do is what event is this? All right, so you go ahead and click on what event is this? And this is where you can give the title of your events. This could be titled virtual office hours. It could be titled departmental office, uh, departmental meetings. So whatever title you want to give it, you can type it in right here at the top. Then here, location. This is which platform are you going to use to meet, right? In this case, I'm using Blackboard Collaborate, but you can change this. And you can make this um, to either Zoom, Google Meet, any of those platforms, right? Or if it's a face-to-face -face meeting, you can always put the, the office that, in which you're meeting, right? So it could be room B508-1. But if you put, let's say, Google Meet, the link to the room will be in this, in this invitation, right? So that's what I've done here. I copy the link to my collaborate sessions and I say click on this link to join the session and when they click on the link it takes them directly into the collaborate room that I'm waiting you know in which I'm waiting for them but if you do Google Meet or Zoom you don't have to do this part it already will um, integrate the Google Meet or the Zoom link in the invitation okay um, <clears throat> here at the bottom 
you can put description instructions, you know, hey, bring your meeting notes or bring this or bring that. This is where you can write your instructions here in the body of the email. Here, here at the bottom is the URL and you have an opportunity to create a custom URL, right? And so it basically gets added to Canonly.com forward slash and then whatever you name your, your events, it will fall right here as a URL. And this is what we are going to later copy and put into the Blackboard course so that students can then go back here. Let me show you, let me go back. And this is, this is where that link, uh, this is where they click here, they're clicking on that link this link right here. This is the link that I copied and I put in here for virtual office hours. Okay, then you get to choose a color. So any events that are created through Calendly can then be identified by a color. In this case, I'm using purple to identify um, any events that are scheduled through Calendly. And I can show you that from my Google Calendar uh, and so this is how when someone creates an appointment with you, it's, that event will show up in your Google Calendar automatically. All right. So once you're done filling this box, if you make any, any changes, just make sure you click save and close to move on to the next box. The next box is when can people book this event? And so you click on that box. I have mine set up to 60 days in advance, which means that anyone who clicks on my Calendly can, can make an appointment with me 60 days in advance. That's two months ahead of time, right? And so you decide how, how in advance can, can your students or colleagues book an event with you. And then you can also do a date range if you want to do that. I have mine set to indefinitely into the future. The next choice here is how long mm -hmm. do you want these slots to be? My slots are set to one hour. I do one hour sessions with faculty. But if you want to set your meetings to 10, 15 minutes with your students, you can just go here in this drop down menu and you can change it. You can also do custom if you want to be, uh, you know, much more specific to let's say 13 minutes or whatever. Just go to custom and then you can, you know, type in the time. And the next choice we have is, how do you want to offer your availability for this event type? So, I set mine to custom hours. And so right here below, these are the hours that I have set, right? So I'm meeting with faculty. I'm making my calendar available from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday, right? But let's say if I wanted to change this, let's say I wanted to meet with them from 11 to 1, and then I have a break from 2 to 3, then I can do that. I can say, I can, I can click on this plus sign, and I'll say, well, you know, I can say from three then to five. And so that one to two is not available. You can do that here in, in um, Calendly. Uh, I don't do it this way only because what I do is I already go into my Google Calendar and I already put slots in there. Let's say, let me go far ahead into my calendar because I'm already swamped. My calendar is already so busy. But if I, what I do is I already put slots, I block some slots so that, so that Calendly doesn't over, overbook me. So I put my lunch slots here and I hide some slots. Let's say at four, I kind of hide my slots. So I don't want them, I don't want anyone to book at, from four or 10. These are my two hidden slots, 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. So those slots will not appear in Calendly because I have it from 11 to 4. So my 10 a.m. and my 4 p.m. are not bookable. Those are my emergency slots and I keep them hidden 
for emergency reasons. But as you can see, my lunch slots are taken so that in Calendly, no one will book me for my on my lunch. So Calendly will not allow anyone to book because I already have those blocked in my Google Calendar right here. Okay. So let me just undo what I did here. Let me delete this and put this back to 4 p.m. and 4 p.m. So the, so you got a lot of flexibility here. You can you can set your the time range for your office hours directly here. You can also save that schedule if you're constantly changing your schedule. You can save it so that you don't have to come back here and then modify it manually every time. Uh, Calendly allows you to save a schedule so that you don't have to go back and recreate it. If you want to have a buffer time, for me, I have no buffer. I just go from one meeting to the next, one one after the other. I don't do no, you know, I don't do 10 minute in between. I just continue on from 11 to 4. But if you want a buffer, to catch, you know, you catch your breath or use the bathroom, you can click here and create a buffer so that after every meeting, you might have five minutes to take a break and then meet the next person after that buffer. So you can you can do that if you want to set a buffer before the event or after the event. So you have a choice. Okay. Once you, you once you're done with your settings here, you can go ahead and click save and we can move on to the next box. The third box now is invitee questions. So here you can, I don't, I don't, I'm not using this that much because I already have the questions that I need. For example, like we covered here, these are my questions when a student clicks on it. Basically I'm asking them for their full name, email address, and a reason why they want to meet with me. So, but if you want to add more questions, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about here. These are the three inputs that, uh, that I need. I, you know, the, the, this is where I want them to enter their name, email address, and the reason, you know, please share anything that will help prepare for our meeting. These three are already by default, but if you want to add another question, this is where you can add another question, add a new question, and then you can type in your question. It can be a one line, it could be multiple lines, it could be radio buttons, multiple choice or check boxes, or if you want to collect their phone numbers. So this is the information that you can collect and add you know, uh, more questions. This is where you would do that. Okay, so I'm leaving this blank because I already have all I need. All I have, all I need is the full name, their email address, and some information as to why they want to meet with me. So I'm not going to, I'm going to close this. I'm not going to add another question. Uh, the workflow we can skip because that is really for the paid version. And so we're, we're not going to cover that. Um, eventually, if we do ever buy the, the, the tool, then that, you know, we can add workflows to the whole process. But we're not going to cover that here. We're going to keep this very simple. The next option is notification and cancellation policy. So if you click on that, then uh, this is also uh, with the paid account. So this basically sends reminders, uh, but we don't really need that because Google Calendar already will send reminders to your students. So we're gonna skip this too, so we can make this a lot more simpler. You don't have to do this either. So let's go ahead and skip this. And we're not collecting payments, but it would be nice to collect some payments from our students, you know, some coffee money or, um, but again, we're not, we're not collecting payments, right? So we're gonna skip these three boxes. We don't need to do any of these three. All right, so we basically have our Calendly set up. Now, if you wanna take a preview of how the Calendly is gonna look, when the students click on it, you can click on the top uh, link here at the top right corner, view live page. And this will give you a preview of what the student will see when they click on your Calendly link. Right, so this is what, you know, this is what I typed in for the, the descriptions, instructions. Click on this link to join the session. 
I also have a photo of myself, right? And so you can do the same if you click on the top right corner here, account, account settings. And you can add a photo by clicking on this here and uploading your photo. Um, and, you know, and also adding a welcome message if you want. You can add a welcome message so that when the students uh, go to the landing page, you have a nice little welcoming message for them there. And you can do branding. This is where you can, you can actually put in the FIT logo if you like. I did that already. And this is where your link is, right? This is where I have my custom link. I have my first name underscore Diaz1. And you can change this. As long as it's available, you can change this to whatever you like. If no one else has taken it, then you can make this whatever you like. And this is the login. You can change the login if you ever des decide to leave FIT, you're not stuck with it, you can change this to another email address. So you can always change your login. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, now let me show you how uh, we, we can copy the link and put it into Blackboard. So let me go back into the home page. All right, and so this is the link that I'm going to copy. Now you can also send this link via email to your students, or you can copy this link and also put it on your email signature. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if I go to an email here at the bottom, um, book a session with me. This is on your email signature in, uh, um, in, um, in your Google email. You can go to settings. You can click on these three little dots. Sorry, the little gear icon. And then go to see all settings. Uh, scroll down all the way to your email signature right here. And in your email signature, you can type book a session with me, highlight it, click on this little link icon. And remember, we're, we're gonna copy this link here, copy link. Go now back into my email, my email signature, click on this little link icon Make sure you highlight book a session with me, or you can say virtual office hours. And then you click on the link icon, paste the link here to your Calendly. You can also test it to make sure it works. Takes a few seconds. There it is, As you, so it is working. Then you click OK. And now it's in your email signature. Then scroll down, make sure you click Save Changes. And that's how you add your Calendly link to your email signature so that whenever you email someone, they have access to your Calendly calendar and they can always book a session with you. Now, to put it into you, your course in Blackboard, you simply go to the course that you want to add your Calendly link. And let me go back. And at the top left corner on Blackboard, you have this little um, plus icon at the top left corner. Click on web link. Give it a name, let's say virtual office hours whatever you want to call it. Paste the Calendly link here, Command V or Control V on a PC. And that's the link to your Calendly. Then click on this little box at the bottom left, available to users. Click Submit at the bottom right. And now you have the Virtual Office Hours button here. And so when your students click on it, it should take them to your Calendly page. Let's see if it works. There it is. And so that's how you can, number one, create a Calendly account, 
how to set it up, the how to, how to set up a Calendly account through this, you know, all the settings that we did, and then how to add the Calendly link to your email signature in Google in Gmail, and then how to add the Calendly link to your Blackboard course. So we covered all that today. And if you have any questions or if you get stuck, uh, please feel free to email me at Jose underscore Diaz, the number one, at fitnyc.edu. And I'll be happy to help you set up your Calendly account. And um, please let me know how it goes, if it works for you, and then, uh, or if you have any questions, I'll be happy to help. All right, good luck. Take care.